Suppose you want to know whether two doctors agree in their assessments. For instance, there is a procedure for classifying patients as depressed or not depressed. But how do we measure agreement? That's where Cohen's Kappa comes in. In this video, I will explain to you what Cohen's Kappa is, how it is calculated and how you can interpret the results. So let's start right away with the first question. What do we need Cohen's Kappa for? We use Cohen's Kappa when we want to assess the agreement between two raters. Now, of course, the question is what the raters are measuring. They could measure a nominal variable, such as whether a person has a depression, yes or no, an ordinal variable, or a metric variable, such as patient's blood pressure. Cohen's kappa is used in case of a nominal variable. So use Cohen's kappa when you want to measure agreement between raters evaluating a nominal variable. But what exactly is agreement and what is the difference to association? Agreement means raters give the same ratings for the same items. Association means two variables move together. When one goes up or down, the other tends to as well. And we can have poor agreement, but strong association. But how is it possible? Let's say we have method A and method B. Now method A always is two times method B. So the Pearson correlation is one, because when method A is up, also method B is up. However, the agreement is poor, because the values differ significantly. Although they move in the same direction, the ratings are always different, so method A and method B disagree, and therefore the agreement is low. Okay, but let's just look at an example. Suppose you've developed a measurement tool, such as a questionnaire, that doctors can use to assess whether a person is depressed or not. Now you give the measuring instrument to two doctors and let them evaluate 50 people with it. The big question now is, how well do the doctors' measurements agree? If the assessments of the doctors agree very well, one speaks of high inter-rater reliability. And it is precisely this inter-rater reliability that Cohen's kappa measures. Cohen's kappa is therefore a measure of how reliably two raters measure the same. But note, Cohen's kappa can also be applied when the same rater evaluates the same items at two time points. In that case, Cohen's kappa indicates how well the measurements of the same person agree. In our example, the variable has two categories, depressive and non-depressive, but it could also have more than two. So Cohen's kappa measures the inter-rater agreement for nominal ratings when two raters evaluate the same items. One important thing to note. Let's say here we have the rating of the raters and there we have the true value, so if a person is really depressed or not. With Cohen's kappa, you can only make a statement about how reliably the raters measure the same, but it does not tell you whether what they are measuring is correct. If raters almost always give the same classification, Cohen's kappa will be very high. However, it does not tell you whether those classifications are correct or if they reflect reality. In the first case, one speaks of reliability. In the second case, one speaks of validity. But how do we calculate Cohen's kappa? Let's say this is our example data. First, we calculate Cohen's kappa with Numico and then we'll calculate it by hand and hopefully we'll get the same results. If you like, you can load this dataset with the link in the video description or you can copy your own data into this table. Now you click on the tab Reliability. Under Reliability, you can calculate the different reliability statistics. Depending on how many variables you click and which level of measurement they have, you will get a suitable suggestion. 
if you click on Rater 1 and Rater 2, Cohen's kappa will be calculated. Cohen's kappa is calculated for nominal variables. If your data was detected as metric, please change the scale level here. There you can see the calculated Cohen's kappa and here the cross table. If you don't know how to interpret the result, just click on Summary in Words or Interpretation. The value of 0.44 suggests a moderate level of agreement according to commonly accepted benchmarks. So our Cohen's kappa is 0.44. Let's try to get the same by hand. We can compute Cohen's kappa with this formula. For that we need PO, the Rater's observed agreement, and PE, the expected agreement by chance. For example, if raters judged completely at random, like flipping a coin for each patient to decide depressed or not depressed. So how do we get PO and PE? Let's start with PE. For this we create a table with the frequencies of the respective answers. Here we have our two raters, each of whom has assessed whether a person is depressed or not. Now we want to count how often both have measured the same and how often they have not measured the same. So we create a cross table. Here we have rater 1 with not depressive and depressive and there we have rater 2 with not depressive and depressive. Now we simply keep a tally sheet. The first person rated both people as not depressed, so a dash goes in this place. The second person was rated by Rater 1 as depressed and by Rater 2 as not depressed, so a dash goes in that space. And in the third case, both Raters have rated the person as not depressed. We now do this for all people. Let's assume our final result looks like this. Both Raters marked 17 people as not depressed and 19 people as depressed. Those matches sit on the diagonal of our table, meaning the raters measure the same thing. Any mismatches sit off the diagonal. Now we want to know how often both raters agree and how often they don't. Rater 1 and Rater 2 agree that 17 patients are not depressed and 19 are depressed. So both raters agree in 36 cases. In total, 50 people were assessed. With these numbers, we can now calculate the probability that the measurements of both raters agree. We just divide 36 by 50. So in 72% of the cases, both raters agree and in 28% they disagree. That gives us the observed agreement. But how do we calculate PE? To calculate PE, we first need the sums in each of the rows and columns. 17 plus 8 is 25, 6 plus 19 is 25, 17 plus 6 is 23, and 8 plus 19 is 27. With this we can now calculate PE. In the first step, we calculate the probability that both raters would arrive at the rating not depressed by chance. Rater 1 rated 25 out of 50 people as not depressed, so 50%. Rater 2 rated 23 out of 50 people as not depressed or 46%. The overall probability of both raters saying not depressed by chance is 0.5 times 0.46, which is 0.23. In the second step, we calculate the probability that the raters would both say depressed by chance. Rater 1 says depressed in 25 out of 50 people or 50%. Rater 2 says depressed in 27 out of 50 people or 54%. The overall probability of both raters saying depressed by chance is 
0.5 multiplied by 0.45, which is 0.27. Now we just need to sum both values up and get PE. Therefore, if the doctors had no guidance and simply flipped a coin, the probability of such a match is 50%. Now we can substitute both values and we get a kappa of 0.44, which is a moderate agreement. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.